but what typifies our brand of capitalism here in the United States? Well, the first thing we have to remember about capitalism is that it's all about money. And the, the main error is that money is equated with wealth. And that is an enormous error because, in my view, the, the real wealth of nations uh, are uh, the uh, population and um, its uh, talents and uh, resources, and of course, uh, the resources of the earth. Those are the real two um, wealth, that, that's the real assets of, of any nation. And so uh, the era came about because, of course, money was a very uh, useful way of tracking transactions and um, it was a perfectly sensible and wonderful invention so that you didn't have to carry a pig and exchange it for a cow the way early barter was done. But um, as uh, the money system uh, grew, um, the inevitable happened. People began to equate the money units with actual wealth. And so then the money system uh, went global and it, it um, began to disorder uh, every local ecosystem and every local social system on the planet. And so what we have now is this gigantic financial bubble um, where, you know, there's about nine times more money circulating than the real uh, goods and services that are produced and money is supposed to track. So you have, um, here are the people on the ground producing real shoes and uh, real uh, clothes and real food and uh, the, the tracking system, which can be perfectly honest, i.e. the money system, as long as it does track the real world is fine, but what's happening now is that the money system has kind of veered off into outer space. And it's rather like the, what happened um, before the Great Depression in 1929, where, you know, assets, paper assets were piled on paper assets and, you know, and of course there, there will be um, an eventual collapse. Is there a connection between <coughs> the uh, some of the unsustainable practices that we have and the overemphasis on competition. Yeah, the overemphasis on competition is clearly uh, dysfunctional, unsustainable, and that's been a large part of my work, um, that I've been trying to point out that the cooperative economy, uh, all the caring and sharing and volunteering and everything, which I call the love economy, is about 50% of all of the economic activity which goes on in every country in the world. In fact, in some developing countries, it's about 75%. Um, and that as long as that, because it's not conducted in money, um, is completely overlooked, we forget the extent to which the economy is absolutely based on cooperation. And there's nothing wrong with competition. There's all kinds of uh, healthy competition where good ideas drive out bad ideas, you know, and you can find uh, people competing to give away money, like um, the potlatch um, Indians. So competition in Nature always uh, exists within a framework of cooperation, and so we had to get the right relationship uh, with cooperation and competition is the most important thing. And what's interesting to me is that all of the social sciences, other than market economics, uh, studies the full repertoire of human behavior, all the way from conflict to cooperation. And it's only market economics that focuses on just the um, competition side. So, you know, you can go to game theory or, or political science or social sciences, and they are studying all the cooperative systems as well. And so that's why uh, I believe we have to move all of our public policy making um, away from from being dominated by economics to a systems kind of approach, a multidisciplinary approach, uh, which is quite doable. Uh, that's what we were doing at the U.S. Office of Technology Assessment, uh, which I served on from 1974 to 1980. This was a multidisciplinary approach to policy, where certainly we brought economists in, but um, they were on tap rather than on top. Uh, you know, one of the things that I've been doing uh, recently is going after the, the phony so-called Nobel Prize in economics, 
which as uh, I, hope, I hope more people know now is actually called the Bank of Sweden prize and uh, that mo that prize a million dollars was put up by the Bank of Sweden um, uh, to set up this prize in economics in memory of Alfred Nobel and finally about a year ago um, the, the where they gave this prize to two more economists of the Chicago school who were purporting to show by a mathematical model that um, central banks should be free of political control um, what happened was that mathematicians who had won Nobel, real Nobel Prizes all went public and said this is a misuse of mathematics which of course many people have known for a long time that economists dress up their ideology in mathematical models hoping that we won't notice the ideology underneath it you know and so um, it was very interesting because when this happened first about um, in, in, in December 2004 uh, they all these mathematicians went public and um, I, uh, some of my friends in Sweden gave me the phone number of Peter Nobel who is the grandson of the Nobel uh, uh, Award um, philanthropist and um, I asked him what he thought about this and he told me quote that the Bank of Sweden um, is like a cuckoo, he said, who's laid its egg in the nest of another very decent bird, <laughs> the Nobel Committee, and that actually they are um, infringing on the copyright and the you know the good name of uh, of Nobel, and so um, this I I imagine very soon now will bring down. Um, the profession of economics to a more appropriate size uh, and get them to really fess up to the fact that they're, they're a profession. What's wrong with being a profession? You know, there's nothing wrong like law and medicine being a profession. Um, don't tell us you're scientists, that's all. The main feedback loops from individuals to decision making um, currently are prices and votes. And the problem is that the prices are not correct. They don't include the social and environmental costs. And the votes are corrupted by big money and big corporations. And so when you've got those two main feedback loops to decision making at every level uh, corrupted in that way, um, that that's when uh, you get a very distorted kind of um, economy. So um, the, um, the, the Bali group, uh, the, the Business Alliance for Local Living Economies, which uh, uh, I'm very much a supporter of, are really trying to um, correct that by uh, um, having local businesses uh, try to uh, f uh, f f feed each other, as it were, and uh, to uh, use local food and uh, you know th this is um, a more natural way of doing it we have to learn a lot from ecosystems because the economy is always embedded in the ecosystem and so you know you have a diversity um, you try to have a cooperation and competition in in balance uh, and uh, obviously um, it has to work uh, for all of the members of that uh, community whether it's an ecological community or a uh, human community um, it has to be modular uh, and uh, boundaries are really very important and I, I like to use the analogy of, of human cells or any kind of cells um, they have membranes and communities should have membranes too.